Okay, uh, this is the last video um, for this packet. It's going to be video 4.11, Comparing Proportional Relationships. Um, with this video, we are going to uh, try to show, um, use unit rate or slope to be able to uh, help predict um, either distances or times that happen to fall either in between intervals or maybe future intervals. And we're also going to be able to use it um, to be able to find for both uh, values. And so we're going to be setting up proportions to really um, try to find um, both sides, our, our x-axis and our y-axis. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. Um, the first thing that, that you see on your notes is that we've got three different people. Um, they have three different rates um, at which they're traveling. All of them are comparing kilometers per minute. Um, and they're displayed in three different tables. Um, on this one, we have a kind of the X, Y, T chart, um, but it's more of it in table form. It's kind of on its side. Um, and this Kalis, um data is shown in your typical X, Y, T chart. This would be your X. This would be your Y. Over here, this would be your X. And this would be your Y. Um, and then Hannah's is actually graphed out, and we can also find our X and Y by knowing our axis. We're going to use look at each one of these pieces of data um, and the first thing we're going to try to do is determine their unit rate. Um, we want to know what's the rate of change or what is their slope. Um, and we know from last um, section that slope equals unit rate. Um, and so if we can find our unit rate, that's going to help us solve some of these problems down here um, and predict either what's going to happen in the future or maybe what's happening in between each of these intervals. Uh, so we could find something like after, instead of after 16 minutes, maybe we could find something after 20 minutes. Um, even though it's not graphed out here, we could find out an exact distance that she's finding based off of, of finding her uh, unit rate. So the first thing we're going to do is find out exactly how much we're increasing per unit. Um, with our unit rate, we're going to be, for each one of these, because, because they're comparing similar data, we're going to try to find out how many kilometers are we traveling per one minute. Remember that unit rates have to have um, this one in the bottom or in the denominator. Um, and so we're trying to figure out how many kilometers per one minute. Uh, we know we're trying to find out how many kilometers per one minute because we know that unit rate equals slope. We also know that slope is our changes in y's over changes in x. So if we look at each one of these y uh, variables, they're, they're representing, y is representing kilometers in each one, okay? Um, since it's representing kilometers and we need to have the y's over the x's, we know we're going to do kilometers per minute, minute being our x value. So for each one, we're trying to find out how many kilometers per minute. All we have to do is really pick one of our ratios. We know we have, if we start with this first one for Cheryl, she traveled two kilometers per one minute, or excuse me, per eight minutes. Now that is not a unit rate. We need to get it to be a unit rate by dividing by eight. By dividing by what was on the denominator, we're left with 0 0.25 kilometers on top. And on the bottom, we're left with one minute. This is a unit rate. This is our slope. This is our rate of change. We know that, that Cheryl is traveling at a rate of 0.25 kilometers every minute. That's going to be our unit rate for Cheryl. She's traveling 0.25 kilometers per one minute. Hannah is traveling at a different rate. Um, to be able to find an interval for her to build a fraction, it's going to be a little bit trickier. We've got to pick one of these points. So I'm just going to start with the first point. And I know that this point represents that she's traveling one kilometer in five minutes. Okay. That's her slope. We're going up one kilometer over five minutes. Okay. Up one kilometer over five minutes. Up one kilometer over five minutes. Okay. 
um, but we want to get this simplified down to unit rate form, so we're going to divide both by 5. We're going to get 0.2 kilometers every 1 minute, and that's our unit rate. 0.2 kilometers per 1 minute. Kayla, um, her dad is given in a T-chart form, so we can pick whatever one we want. Um, if we want, we can just, since we pick the first one every time, let's go ahead with the second one. It's still a constant rate, so we still know we're traveling 10 kilometers in 20 minutes. Which, if you see, that simplifies down to 5 tenths, which would have been the other one. We divide both by... 20, 10 divided by 20 gives us 0.5 kilometers per minute. 0.5 kilometers per minute. Now on your handout, be careful, make sure you're uh, filling in the right one. I've actually kind of changed the order for the video's sake, but your unit rate one should actually be down on the bottom. We're now going to use this to predict uh, how far each competitor cycled after 50 minutes. There are a couple different ways to do this, uh, but the obvious way is to kind of build that proportion because we know that this is a proportional uh, relationship. And so if we want, we can take um, Cheryl's unit rate. Whoops. set up a proportion. She travels 0.25 kilometers every one minute. We're asking um, how far does she cycle after 50 minutes? So we're going to plug a 50 in. There. To solve this, we take 50 times 0.25 divided by 1, and we end up getting 12.5 kilometers. You think about it, she's traveling 0.25 kilometers the first minute, 0.25 kilometers the second minute, 0.25 the third minute, fourth, fifth. So we have to keep doing that all the way up to 50. And then we have to go back and add each one of those up. Well, that's the same as just taking 0.25 times 50, which is essentially what we did with the proportion. Okay, I'm going to go over here. And let's look at Hannah's. We know Hannah's rate is 0.2 kilometers over one minute. And that equals, uh, we're trying to find how many after 50 minutes. So after 50 groups of two, uh, when we multiply diagonally and divide up or down, to solve our proportion, we're going to find 10 kilometers. Because 50 times 0.2 is 10 Divided by 1 is still just 10. And then Kayla, over here, uh, her unit rate was 0.5 kilometers every minute. We're going to use that to predict as well after 50 minutes. Multiply diagonally, divide up or down, and we get 25 kilometers. So we're able, because these are all traveling at constant rates, they have constant rates of change, constant slopes, uh, constant unit rates, we are able to use a proportion to be able to predict how many after 50 minutes. And if you look, 50 minutes is going to be the offer graph here, it's going to be, be down here even further. Uh, and over here, we would have to extend our, our, our table even more. Um, but instead of trying to extend the table, we can just simply use the rates that we know and that we've calculated, uh, build a proportion, and we get our, get our answer. The final problem, we're going to try to extend this a little bit, is going to be 
how long did it take each um, competitor to travel five kilometers? So if we look at the, the problem we just did before, we were actually solving for minutes. This time we're going to be solving for kilometers. Um, we're going to build a proportion again because this is a proportional relationship. We can do that. But instead of plugging a 50 in for the minutes, we're going to plug a 5 because it's kilometers up here on top. Um, and we're now solving for minutes. So we're going to take 5 times 1 divided by 0.25. And when we do that, we get 20 minutes. For Hannah, going to set up the same thing, but her minute rate is 0.2 kilometers per one minute. Notice how I'm keeping the same units on the bottom and top. Five kilometers is plugged in up top, x is down at the bottom, we multiply diagonally, divide up or down, five times one gives us five, divided by 0.25 gives us 25 minutes. And then Kayla is traveling at 0.5 kilometers per one minute. And we're trying to figure out how long does it take her to travel 5 kilometers. Five times one divided by 0.5 gives us 10 minutes. So if we look at all these rates, um, we can uh, conclude a few things. One, we should know that um, because 0.2 is smaller than both 0.25 and 0.5, that Hannah is traveling at the slowest rate, which makes sense. Because if we look at example or question number two, after 50 minutes of travel, um, Cheryl had traveled 12 and a half miles. Kayla had traveled 25 miles, and Hannah had only traveled 10 miles. So she is traveling at the slowest rate. Um, when we tried to, to compare it to see at the 5-kilometer mark, who had, uh, how long did it take each competitor? It only took Cheryl 20 minutes. It took Hannah 25 minutes and Kayla 10 minutes. So we can look at our unit rate here and say, because it's the smallest unit rate, um, Hannah is definitely traveling at the slowest speed or the slowest rate. Now, Kayla, on the other hand, 0.5 is bigger than both of these. She's traveling at the fastest rate. If we look at the 50 minutes, um, after 50 minutes, Kayla had traveled 25 kilometers, which is a lot faster than both, in fact, twice as fast as Cheryl, um, and faster than Hannah as well. And after at the 5-kilometer mark, it only took Kayla 10 minutes, um, where it took Cheryl and, and Hannah 25 minutes. So we can use these unit rates to, to really uh, learn a lot about our graphs and, and, and our rates of change. Um, I hope that helped, and we will uh, continue with our packets when you get back.